Proxmox jingle jingle, is that your favorite word? Seriously though, you guys seem to really enjoy the terrible and sketchy setup that was the Proxmox cluster back when it was running on the ThinkPad X201s. That is now my most viewed video, and you guys made it clear in the comments, I have not scratched the surface of Proxmox. So I've been working out a way to follow that up. Actual proper desktop computers with high power CPUs, and meaningful amounts of RAM. Well, I did have fun struggling through Proxmox on these terrible old ThinkPads. These have more business running like Windows 7 than anything actually modern. I think it was time for an upgrade. I wanna run more different kinds of software this time and do even more testing and maybe even more Minecraft servers as inefficiently as possible using Windows. Just for the commenters. Whoa, hey, hey, don't click away yet. Proxmox, it's coming. Before I can test the cluster, I need to build it of course, which is why I've got these, the $50 Dell Optiplexes from a previous video, my Proxmox installer USB, and a pile of various DDR3 RAM modules to distribute amongst these. Let's build a cluster. You get a hard drive, you get a hard drive, and you get a hard drive. Two of these systems are going to get 16 gigs of RAM each. These will be for those ones. The third system is going to get 24 gigabytes. I took apart each of the systems, pulled out the CD drives and the hard drive trays so I could get down to the memory, loaded them all up with the RAM, put the hard drives in, and then closed everything back up. And they work, they still have windows on them, but I was just checking, 24 gigs, 16 gigs, and 16 gigs. The Proxmox installation is pretty simple. Just give it a name, direct it to your router, and give it an IP address, and click install, and it will do this for a while on all three computers. They're all done already. This was so much faster than those old ThinkPads. And here is the complete cluster setup. I've got all three computers headless now, got rid of the monitors. I've got my networking up here, so each one is connected to the network switch. And I've also got this computer plugged in so I can manage them all from there. Time for some configuration and figuring out if I know how to use Proxmox again. I have not touched it since the X201 cluster and I didn't exactly know what I was doing back then either. We'll, we'll see if I can figure this out. Proxmox VE login. I know I made a password. I don't know what the username is. Root and my password, is that how this works? Yes, that's how this works. Okay, we're off to a good start. You do not have a valid subscription for the server. We ran into this last time. It's an easy workaround. I am interested in trying out Proxmox VE helper scripts this time. Apparently that's supposed to make stuff easier. PVE post install. In theory, this script should do all of the stuff I did manually last time, disabling the enterprise repo and getting us on the community update channel. How to use. To use PVE post install, run the command below. Okay, so I'll copy this. Uh, be careful when copying scripts from the internet. Okay, I am blindly trusting this. Now we go to our Proxmox virtual environment and figure out where I paste this. Start the Proxmox post install script, yes. It is recommended to answer yes to all options presented. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If you plan to utilize a single node instead of a clustered environment, you can disable unnecessary high availability, high availability services. We actually want to keep this because we are running three computers, not just one Proxmox installation. So I'm going to say no to this one. And sure, I guess we'll update. APT update failed. I don't know if that's a problem. I know that's not supposed to happen. Maybe we'll just ignore that and hope it doesn't become a problem later. That seems like a good idea. Let's set up the other ones. I'm just looking through this fairly extensive list of user scripts on here. You can just easily install Jellyfin Media Server. I gotta try some of this stuff. This is super cool. Hosting platform automates maintenance and security. That sounds boring. iVentoy, PXE Server. Oh, that would be super cool to experiment with. This would do network booting, I think. I have no idea how PXE works or how to actually boot over the network using it, but that sounds super cool. I might want to try that. R suite. I guess this is the uh, Linux ISO category. Gaming and leisure. Ooh, plant it. I can use my cluster to keep track of watering plants, apparently. Wave log, amateur radio stuff. There's so much cool stuff in here. First things first, we need to set up a storage pool. Actually, no, we need to set up the cluster. What am I talking about? Data center, cluster. We need to create a cluster. Let's get that done. Join cluster, paste information, add password, join request. Okay, finish setup locally. Seems right. 
And yes, that does seem to be working. Three nodes online, 24 CPU cores, and 55 gigs of RAM. Everything's working. I've been experimenting with this for the last few hours and I can finally do something that should have been possible on the old cluster, but I didn't know that it was a thing that I could do. So I'm gonna show you that now. Minecraft server time. I may not be using Windows anymore, but I am using a full desktop installation of Ubuntu. I don't know if that's better. I guess it's better. I'm now online on the Minecraft server that's running on Ubuntu, on Proxmox, physically on node three of this cluster. I did show this off last time that I could dynamically move which computer was running on, but I didn't do this. Someone brought up in the comments that I should be able to migrate the server to the other physical computer without actually having to leave my game. I didn't test that at the time because I thought there was no way that was gonna work, right? That sounds crazy. Turns out Proxmox can just do that. It's built in, it'll do it. Migrate to, sure, let's go to node two this time. I'm on the server right now. It is copying the state of the RAM from one computer to the other at 120, is that maybe bytes per second? Let's make another crafting table. I keep dying because I'm distracted by my server. Yes. No, not trap doors, I don't need trap doors. Yes. Migration completed, transferred five gigabytes VM state. So it copied the state of the RAM from one computer to the other. I never left the game. I've just been playing it. I made this little platform. This Minecraft server was running on this physical computer and I can just turn this off now. It doesn't matter because it's migrated to this one with not so much as a stutter in the game. Zero interruptions to the gameplay. And it's on an entirely different computer now. Oh, I didn't actually mean to turn that off. Oops, uh, turn back on please. Yes. What other cool stuff can I do with this? I should try out that high availability thing. Back in the Proxmox web interface, I've got both my VMs here added to the high availability tab. And in theory, I should be able to simulate a hardware failure here. Just unplug the computer that the VMs are running on and they should just redistribute to the other nodes in the cluster. Now this one's not going to be seamless. They will have to restart up from scratch but they will do it automatically. So we're looking for Ubuntu A and Ubuntu B to go onto some other node in the cluster. Opti node two. I'm just gonna press the power button on this thing and turn it off. Boom. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I did lose access to my Minecraft server now because the node did shut down unexpectedly. It wasn't gracefully migrated. In theory though, if I give this a few minutes, I should see these VMs automatically move onto other nodes. Oh, and there they go. One of them moved onto node one and one of them moved onto node three. I don't actually know how it picks which one it goes to, but it's cool that it distributed it evenly instead of just putting it all on one node. I wonder how it decides that. I've logged back into my VM here and it's running again. I didn't have to touch anything on the web interface at all. We've simulated a hardware failure. It's redistributed everything to other nodes and the VMs are both running again. If I wanna to connect to my Minecraft server though, I do have to restart it manually. Although you could set up a script to do this automatically when the VM loads. And that would make it so even if you had a hardware failure and the server did go down, when it moved to another node, it would just automatically restart again and come back online in a few minutes. Join Minecraft server. Yeah, that was less than two minutes of downtime and I'm back on the Minecraft server on a different computer again with an unexpected shutdown. I feel like I should not find this this interesting, but it is, it's very interesting. Is this a hole? Wow. Anyways, let's test some other software. I'm done with Minecraft for now. Goodbye. I wanna try out another one of these user scripts. What can I install on here? Actually, I wanna try that Jellyfin Media Server. Let's see if we can get this working. I'll go to the shell on node one, paste in our script. Ooh, that is happening very quickly. I didn't get to read anything. Automatically mount all available VAPI devices. Sure, I don't know what that means. Containers unprivileged? Oh no. Oh, VAPI enables GPU hardware acceleration. So that would help you stream videos to devices that don't natively support their codecs or if the resolution is just too high and you can't stream with your current bandwidth. Welcome to Jellyfin. Jellyfin actually did install and worked totally fine, but I completely failed to figure out how to mount a media library. And then I got distracted by much more important things. BeamNG Drive Multiplayer. I've downloaded the BeamMP server and I'm running it under Ubuntu once again, and it works. I've got BeamNG loaded up here and I have two users connected to this server right now. Shout out to the upgraded $10 computer. That thing is running multiple of these connections in the web browsers. 
BeamNG Drive, Minecraft, and an entire other NAS operating system that's hosting stuff. Anyways, let's see if I can move this BeamNG server onto a different computer without any interruptions. Ubuntu B, migrate. Let's put this on node two, migrate. There it goes, that's starting. Well, it started migrating and so far I'm still playing. It's going quite quickly actually. So I'm surprised at how well I'm driving this car right now. It's quite quick and this game was not made with keyboards in mind. Migration's done, 50 seconds. That's it, I played BeamNG the entire time, nothing happened. Let's put the Minecraft server and the BeamNG server on the same computer. Let's move this to node two as well. Well, I've had no interruption to my games that were running on this computer and this computer. Now in theory, I can just unplug both of these. You're not part of the cluster anymore. There goes my servers. I'm still playing Minecraft and I'm still on BeamNG Drive. High availability. Proxmox definitely does work better with actual computers that have more than four gigs of RAM and not laptop CPUs. This experience was so much better than trying to do it on the X201s. Everything about this just works. As I say that I've been disconnected from both the servers. Oh no, what happened? I accidentally unplugged an ethernet cable. That wasn't the cluster crashing or anything. Not that it's a cluster anymore, it's just that one now. Beyond testing these virtual machine things and saying, oh, this is really cool. I don't actually know what to do with Proxmox. Sure, there's cool stuff in those user scripts I could install, but like they're really confusing to configure and uh, I don't really benefit from any of it. Like what am I actually going to self host that I'm actually going to use? Number one, a media server. Number two, just Samba file sharing, both of those can just run on like TrueNAS and it's simpler and easier. I think you've gotta be pretty hardcore into home labbing to deploy a software like Proxmox long-term for yourself. It's more complicated and more confusing than other free like NAS software, which makes sense because it's not a NAS software. It's a lot more than that, a lot more than I need. I think that's going to conclude the experimenting with this Proxmox cluster. Who knows, maybe I'll find another reason to use it in the future. And with that, thank you for watching and get subscribed for next week's video. I'm going to dismantle the rest of this setup.